everyone. This is Tina with React Designs, and I'm here with a little video on um, using your music pages and book pages for um, pages, actual pages in your journal. That sounds confusing, but basically using them whole, not ripping them up, but actually use them as a page in your journal. So, um, I just was going to show you some ways that you can decorate them up a little bit and not just, you know, put them in as is, um, but add a little bit more interest to them than, you know, just putting them in there. Anyway, um, let me move this out of the way. The things that I like to do um, is, first off, I like to do the napkin thing um, and add just some color on here that's kind of translucent and I'm going to do that on this because I just think it'd be really pretty in my journal that I'm doing and I'm going to do that real quick and then we'll just go on to some other things and I'm sure some of you have seen this it's nothing new but a lot of you may not have so um, basically I'm just going to take my napkin apart, put the tape on the back. Um, there's usually always three layers. Okay, there's one layer. And I save these because I use it for different things. So, and I, I guess I will do a video on that. But, here, hopefully I got enough stick them left on there. And, get that apart. Okay, so once it starts to tear, the second layer is a little bit harder, but it usually comes off pretty easily. Okay, so now I have this napkin, and I'm going to pick out parts of it that I want to put on here. Now remember, I'm putting this in my page like this, so I probably want to think about how it's going to look. And I think I'm going to do just like this portion right through here, and then I may add things to it. So I am gonna take, where'd my little water thing go? Okay, well, let me see, here it is. Okay, I have this little thing here, and all it is is just a little water. It's filled with water. Um, you can use a paintbrush, it works just as well. You could just take a little paintbrush and you know dip it in water and it will do exactly the same thing, okay? I just happen to have this, so I might as well use it. Um, it came with my tear rulers. I never use it for that. Um, I almost always <laughs> exclusively use it for this, but... So I'm just gonna take my pattern and try and keep what I want in there. And then, I don't know, I may keep part of that in there. Sometimes I really don't know until I go in and start, you know, putting it on the page. So, all right, so I'm going to tear this off. And the trick to this is holding down, like with a finger, the part you don't want to rip and your thumb and then going through. And once, once you do the water, it's really, it's really um, pretty easy. Now, here's the thing. You are deliberately trying not to get a straight edge. You're trying to get it kind of feathered because that will help it um, look um, seamlessly um, part of your design. I love this flower. I think I'm going to try and get that out and use it somewhere if I can. Let's see what other things I've got in there. Oh, that got kind of wet, but that's okay. Um got that. I think I'm going to try and get some of this flower so I can put it on top. And I don't want the Paris again, so I've got to try and work around it. So I'm going to pull that off. So I hope everyone is having a good day. I am super, super stoked because I'm actually, I, I set a schedule for myself to get things done last week and I have 
basically done pretty well and I, I never ever do that so um, you know this is I'm gonna say that you know I'm just so I'm kind of like I'm in shock so and a lot of times too it's just things come up and you can't finish it so okay so I'm gonna put this like right here Normally, you don't want a straight edge, but because, you know, we have a straight edge on here, I'm going to do that. And I'm probably going to use this on the other side. And I may tear off a little bit more. I want that little tiny piece. Okay. So, I am going to take my, excuse me. I'm going to take my... I'm using uh, matte gel as my glue. Um, you can use, uh, you know, Mod Podge or just white glue will work fine. Um, I like to use that. It it doesn't dry super glossy, so um, to me that's kind of a a better. Well, I wanted a different brush, and I think. Okay, hold on a minute, guys. I'm gonna see. Go get my other brush and I'll be right back. Okay, so I found my brush that I wanted to use. I had just cleaned a bunch of brushes and had it sitting by my sink. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and I am going to take... Well, actually, you know what? I'm going to do something else before I do that. I've been doing it this way lately and it seems to work better for me. I'm taking my glue stick and I'm going to kind of put glue stick where I think this is going to go. And then it doesn't have to be down perfectly, but just kind of put it on there. And it, for me, it has worked better lately. So, okay, so I really kind of want to line this up. It doesn't have to be perfect. It can overlap a little, but I want the edges to make sure that they're kind of right there. And I do realize I'm covering most of this, but that's kind of the point, okay? Now, all I'm going to do is first I'm going to do the edges, okay? And guys, I don't care if it has a wrinkle or two because that's kind of kind of the point for me is it just you don't want it to, but I put enough glue stick down to make sure it doesn't bubble too much. And I like this brush because I can kind of smooth it out as I go. I'm going to put more on there as I go and kind of go out to the edges, kind of like you're doing wallpaper. Okay. I didn't put enough glue stick in the middle, but it will, it will work out. Watch. We'll put enough on there. It'll work out. Okay. So I'm just going to really put it on there and I am going to go over the whole music piece. Matter of fact, let me open it up so it's not seeping through the other edge. On this side, I'm not going to do the other side yet. And the reason I'm doing that is that this will actually help strengthen that. And that's one of the reasons, too, I like to decorate because um, it's, it, you know, it's a twofer. It's gonna, what it's going to do is it's going to help strengthen the paper. I've got a lot of wrinkles in that. Should have put more glue stick down, but that's okay. It'll it'll end up looking okay. Promise. I actually like the wrinkles, so I embrace them in myself and in my work. Okay. All right. So anyway, I'm gonna put this aside and let it dry. Actually, you know what? I think I'm gonna do the other piece while I'm here. Then that way. Um, we can do the other, both parts together. Anyway, and like I said, the wrinkles are a good thing. They um, will actually turn out, make to me, to me, make it look really cool in the end. Okay, so I'm going to take this, and I'm going to put this kind of in the middle, just kind of right there. This time I'm going to put more glue stick on, so maybe it sticks down a little better. 
you're trying to get all all of it down so that you don't have bubbles but if you do like I said it doesn't really matter because you'll be it's gonna have wrinkles probably no matter what but okay so then anyway now see that one has less but that's kind of all you're gonna oh, see that piece that's kind of over there you get rid of it so you're just gonna basically put that on there okay and this one I'm gonna smooth it out a little bit with my fingers to get the bubbles out and just take it and go like this and it will smooth down you want to be really gentle because you don't want to tear the napkin and all that's doing is getting some of those bubbles out in the middle I'm just taking my thumb and going across it it's the same way if you've ever done wallpaper you know the little scraper that you have this is, does the same thing really and like I said, a few little wrinkles actually actually will give it character in the end. Oh, I'm pulling that off. It doesn't matter that that overlapped, but it probably would have been better if I had positioned it where it didn't. That's going to be um, in the middle of your signature anyway. But And go back across this. The thing is, you're not really going to know until you already put your glue down if there's bubbles so oops I just tore that but that's okay we're gonna use it anyway it will still work it will still work okay uh, let me see if I have no there's only one piece in there so what I'm gonna do to fix that guys is I didn't mean to tear it right there. It's kind of a not a good spot. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another piece of napkin, which would be, let me see, which one don't I have? I don't have that. So I'm going to take this part right here. And I am going to take it, and it is going to fix the spot that I just messed up, okay? So, I'm going to pull this off. And I, you know, somebody said something to me about, you know, you film all your mistakes and everything. Yeah, I do, because um, if you do this, you're going to make mistakes. Things are not going to always go your way. And you need to realize how easy it is to fix. And then in the end, you know, there really are no mistakes. So on this one, I'm going to go ahead and just put glue down. Since I already had that. And I am going to decide to put this right here. It's going to overlap a little. Let me go down. So I want to hit that. Okay. Get this up. All right, see, so we fixed our little spot, and you will not ever notice. Okay, and I realize that it's not perfect, and there's little holes and things, but that is what's going to make it look good. To me, I think the look you're after when you do this is kind of like a, a painting that's been peeling, and you know, that's kind of what I like it to look like anyway. So then I'm going to do the same thing with this. I'm going to go over the whole thing. And this is kind of why I like to use the um, matte gel because even the, I use the uh, Mod Podge and the, um, not the shiny, but the matte, but it still is shiny compared to the matte medium. And I like it. I don't like it really super shiny, so, or even shiny at all, really. I like it to be kind of dull. And if I want shine, then I'll put that on, but, you know, I like it just, you know, 
a little bit more matte and it does turn out better that way I think all right so now that we've done both sides and we've gone over the whole thing I'm gonna let and it does dry really quick too so I'm gonna put that aside okay and then I'm gonna show you something else that is a little different I think um, we're still going to use a napkin, but um, get some of that off of there so it doesn't stick. Okay. And on this one, let's see, which one was I going to use? I'm going to go ahead and use that. Okay, so on this one, we're going to do something to it after, but first we have to put our napkin on there. And this napkin is um, kind of a, um, just like an outline of black and white. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing I did to that, this one that I did to the other. This one's going to come apart real easy, I can tell. Wrap it up. All right. Now we get a lot of real estate there, don't we? So, anyway. chair over a little bit okay so I got to figure out which I want to put on there and I think I kind of want to put um, this right here and then I'll add some to the other side um, let's see let's see I think that's what I want to put it's a lot going on in here so but I do want this flower some water going here. So again, this is going to go on the side. And I'm going to go ahead and trying not to get the flower part of it. Let's see how far down this goes. Okay, I think that'll work. Oop, oop, oop. Okay, so we got that. And then what other one do I want to do? Do I want to do that? Hmm. Yeah, might as well. I'll just go ahead and do that. I'll do that. I don't know if I'll use this whole thing, but I might as well, I'm going to tear it out. And if I don't use it all, I'll just tear part of it off. Okay, I really want that part. So now I've got my two pieces that I want to use. I'm going to open this up. I'm going to put one here, I think. I'm going to take a little bit more of that off.
find a spot for that. I think I'll put it right back here. Okay, so the other thing that I like to do is, let me see, I am going to use, which page am I going to use for that? I thought I knew that. Okay, yeah. Okay, so here's a music page, and one of the cool things I like to do with this, and this one I probably would take, and because it's not super wide uh, or big, I would probably take this and just go ahead and do it like this, and then, you know, cut it out to fit. Or the other one I could do, I guess I could do this one. You know, I might do this one. I think I'm going to do this one. And this one is a bigger page, but then again, you would, you know, fold it and then put it in there. Um, I'm going to do this one, I think, would be good. I like the kind of the patina of that. What I'm going to do is um, I have these really cool stamps that um, I bought, gosh, ages ago, and I don't remember... Um, exactly where I got them. I'm thinking it's Tuesday morning and they were super inexpensive. And I, you know, when I got them, it was really kind of funny because I never, um, I never could really imagine, well, what am I going to use these for? But I really think they're super, super cool. And, um, I think I've come up with a way. So anyway, what I'm going to do with these is I am going to take my archival ink and you have to use archival ink because um, you don't want it to smear. I'm going to get this nice and wet and I'm using black because you want it to show up against the, um, oh my gosh. And guys, wait a minute. I forgot one thing. I'm going to get my press real quick. Hold on. Okay, so I went ahead and got my, um, this is my We Are Memory Keepers um, uh, gel press. I think I got it at Tuesday morning. And for something like this, it's kind of a good idea to use it just because if it doesn't stamp well, you can go back in and re-stamp it because it holds your kind of position because you really have to, it's not something that you can go back and redo. Um, let's see, I'm hoping this is gonna work, but because I gotta get it below the, it's a little big, so I'm gonna hoping it fits. Okay, uh, it's not sticking real good. When that happens, I usually take my glue stick and I'll put a little glue stick down just to kind of keep it in place. I do this right there. I think that'll work. I think that'll do enough pressure. Oh, it's a little crooked. Okay, I'm hoping it sticks. I don't know. Yeah, it looks like it will. Okay, so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and put that on there just so that I have a shot at doing it again. So you just line up the little holes, put it in, and I'm gonna put that on there. And actually I put it on the wrong part of the page, but that's okay. Well, not really, I can just cut from the bottom, it'll be fine. And it's a little crooked, but that's okay. It's gonna be all right. Anyway, so I'm gonna kinda do that and get a good impression. And hold it down for a little bit because that's part of what the issue is with the stamp is making sure you have it down long enough for the ink to adhere. Okay, now here's the part that should work. Okay, well, I think it did work. Um, yeah, it did. And you can see um, the music through it, but here's our impression. Okay, so... I put that going through the. I didn't even think about it going through the other side, and it didn't. Good. I think I'm gonna put something in there next time, just in case. So I'm gonna take that off. 
and then I'm going to stamp it. Watch this, guys. Oh, if I can find it. Oh, please, come on. This is our napkin that we had. So I'm going to use this. Actually, I'd like to use the bigger one. Let me see. Oh, of course, I ripped it. Oh, well, that's okay. It'll work. I'm going to take our napkin and take this excess ink and put it on here. At some point, guys, this will come in handy. Because you can basically do with this what you did. Oh, it didn't turn out good. Oh, well, that's okay. We got most of the ink off. All right. Um, but that's the idea is you just kind of keep doing that. Now, I have another stamp that I want to use on the other side. And I didn't go through. Oh, well, maybe I won't worry about it then. I just keep thinking there's going to be, I'm going to put a piece of paper in between there. What do I have that will fit? Oh, I have this plastic. I'll try that. I'll just use that. I just want something between there because I just, I don't trust that it's not going to go through. Anyway, I'm going to line this up. Um, and I haven't used this stamp before, so I'm hoping this one will stick. Might not. Let's see. Yeah, it does stick better. But I might put a little glue stick. Um, it comes with magnets. I don't think I need it, but anyway. Let me put that on there. I'm really going to have to ink this one up because I have not used it. And I may just stamp this off on something to make sure it's working. Let's see. I don't think I got enough ink on that yet. I really don't. The stamp pad should be okay. I have others I could have used, but I thought it would be easier to use the big one. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and try it on this first. Just make sure that it's working good. I don't hit it, get it flat. Yeah. Okay, I think it'll work. Okay, let me get it inked up again. Like I said, the reason I'm using this is just the fact that you can um, re-ink it. You can redo it if it doesn't come out right. So, And I don't mind if it's a little broken up. I kind of like that look, but, you know, depends on where it is. If it's in the vital part that you need, well, then that's kind of a problem. All right, hopefully there's enough ink on there now. And I'm going to go ahead and put that on there. Probably use glue stick. Just because I don't think it'll work otherwise. All right. Okay, good. This one I think will fit on there all the way. So I'm going to go ahead and... Put that one on there. Oh, oh well, it fell. So I'm going to just, it did not stick even when I did that. But that's okay. Enough of it's in the right spot. I think we're going to be okay. We're going to do that. Make sure it goes down. All right, I think that's been on there long enough. Yeah, that one turned out reasonably good. I think it could do a little better. I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna do it again. If it stays on there long enough for me to re-ink it, I'm gonna have to do it this way. Looks like right in the middle it didn't go down a little bit. So I'm gonna just re-ink the whole thing. 
and probably had more to do with me putting ink on this than than anything. So I think I'll do a little bit on top. Okay, hopefully this works, guys. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put this back down. And it should work. You know, I buy these little tools and sometimes I just forget I have them, so. Okay, well that didn't turn out perfect, um, but it did, it did pretty good. I mean, it's not as crisp as I would like it, but I think it'll work. I think it'll work just fine. And then this one too. I probably could have gone over that another time, but I think it turned out okay. Anyway, we will be using that in just a second. So, all right. So, I'm going to go ahead and then stamp this off to get the ink off of it. Okay. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and stop the camera and make sure everything's dry and we'll go on to the next part. Okay, so I got everything dry and we're ready to go. Um, this is the one that we did with the um, Paris napkin. And see, this is our mistake and you can't really tell. Um, you can see a little white there, but that's going to disappear in just a minute. Um, here's our other one. Okay, so let's go ahead and do what we're going to do. Let me move this stuff over so it's out of the way. I will show you that next. Okay, so for this one, it's pretty simple. We're just going to take um, our um, vintage photo and let me get my brush. What did I do? Did I leave it up here? I did. Okay. I use this. This is a makeup brush that I got from um, the dollar store. And I lightly go over this, the whole thing, just a little bit. And this is just to kind of vintage it up a little bit, even though it is actually vintage. Okay. All right. Um, what I usually do at this point is I will trim it up and get it, where's my scissors, you know, how it was overlapping, I will get that trimmed up, you know, just to kind of neaten it up a little. This wasn't straight to begin with, so it's not going to be great. And straighten that up a little. And then I take my file, my nail file, and you can just kind of do the rough edges. Oh, here's one right here. I didn't get that. Let me get it. I always find it easier to cut things from the back because I can see the line. Okay. This side we don't need to do anything because it wasn't hanging over. Anyway, so we kind of went over it a little bit and vintaged it up the whole page. Okay. And what you want to do is take your nail file. You can use this for the edges to get any extra pieces off. But you can also use it on top to kind of smooth it out. And it will take some of it off, but that's kind of the look you're going for. And so what this does is it smooths out the edges, okay? Smooths the top of it. I mean, you're not going real hard on it. You're not using sandpaper, just a nail file. Kind of go over it like, you know. And like I said, if it, some of it comes off, that's fine. You're just trying to smooth it out. And if you, I don't know if you can tell on camera but if you can see this matte um, gel, you can't even see any shine to it at all. And that's why I like using it, okay? I've just come be become a complete 
convert to this uh, matte gel. I'm gonna need it in a minute anyway, but okay. So I'm gonna do the same thing to this one. I'm getting off any of the um, rough edges. And that'll make it look more like it's, um, you know, just part of the page and not sitting on top of the page. And that's kind of the look you're going for. So, and usually the edges will have just a little bit of kind of roughness on it. Anyway, so that's kind of makes it all you know, seem one thing. But here's the thing that'll really do it. Take a little bit, let me see my little, of your matte gel medium. Let me get my bowl over here. And I take that and I'll put it in here. I'm having a little bit more, boy, I'm running really low. Okay, put that in there. Okay, and then I take, the tiniest little, what happened? Oh, I didn't do that either. Little drop. I'm going to use, I don't want to use ginger. Let me see. You can use, well, actually, you know what? I think I'm going to use my Distress Ink. Um, distress Ink, Alcohol Ink, whatever it is you want to do. Now, this is very watered down, so I'm going to put just a couple of drops in there. And it has water in it too. So this is whenever I have my, um, if I have my distress ink when it's done, I always fill it up with water and then I use it for this kind of stuff because concentrated, it's actually a lot. So I'm going to just take this, mix it up. I think it could actually be a tiny bit more. See if I can get that to the right color. Yeah, I think that's about right. Okay, this will definitely dot go be a lot um, lighter when it dries. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I am just going to go over my entire thing that I just did, especially on the ends. Okay. And I'm concentrating on the napkin first, okay? Okay, so I'm going to put that aside and let it dry. Okay. But like I said, you want to make sure you get it all over. And get it all over the other side. Go over this a little bit more here. Make sure it all blends in. And I do this and it will all kind of look like one cohesive piece. I don't know why that one piece right there just does not want to go down. Okay. All right, so I'm going to let that dry. And then we're going to go to the next one, and we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to go ahead and cut it. Put 
This time I'm not going to ink it first. Um, I think what I'm going to do is just, well, I might. We'll see. I kind of want to sand it and then I'm going to sand it, I think. First, I want to get this off the edges. Oh, that's not very straight. Let me do that. Yeah, I didn't really cut these. I tore them, so they're not super straight to begin with. So, getting off the extra pieces on the edge. And then I'm going to take this. And I'm going to go ahead and work on getting the edges all nice and smooth. Bumps off of that. See, we have kind of a really rough edge right there, and you just take it and do that, and it will actually get rid of them. Now I'm doing this quickly so that, you know, I can get it done in a reasonable time, but you take your time with it, okay, to get the result that you want. And you can kind of feel which, if there's any little bumps or anything on there, so you'll be able to tell. Okay, so that one's done. Now I'm gonna do this. I should have done it that way before on the other one. You really wanna sand it first because, you know, then you're sanding off what you just did. Okay, on this one, I am just taking it and I am not gonna put the gel on top because it is blending. The other one had kind of a brownish tint in the back of the napkin so it didn't blend nearly as well and this one is without putting the gel on oh, i forgot to put that in the water so you can see how i get all my brushes um, a mess so i'm taking this and all i'm doing is taking my makeup brush and i don't use like these brushes or my um other uh, this brush because um, it'll it'll get the round circles and it doesn't it just doesn't look as good so just get you a cheap makeup brush and or an old one and clean it or something and this works great so this is gonna go all the way around it's gonna make it look vintage and then it's also gonna blend it in let's see I see a spot right there I could sand a little more, but like I said, you're going to just take your time with it, so I'm just, you know, doing it quickly. Okay, so what that does, guys, is that it will make it blend in, okay, so um, you could just do that, and that's the end of it, and that's kind of cool looking, so you don't have just a music page. You can see right through it. Um, let me tell you what I like to do with those. And I will show you really quick. First of all, I, t I have decided that there's a lot of things in my craft room that I'm not using um, that I like. I mean, it's not that I'm going to get rid of them or anything. It's just that, you know, I'm just not, I don't utilize them because I forget about them. So I want to have more fun. And I decided I went through my craft room and I found I've had these, these Arte Arteza, um, real brush pens and they're watercolor pens and they are really fun to use and i've also had um, these uh, color blend spectrum noir um, pencils and i haven't really utilized those so what i decided i was going to do for this is i'm going to get that plastic off of there is that i'm going to go ahead and use them so i'm going to take my um my pens and these are kind of like brush pens it comes with this little water thing get that out of there but i actually have a set where did they go oh here they are 
of these water pencils. And I use those, and I also have a watercolor brush that I use too, um, but I'm gonna use these. And all it does is, it's kinda like the other brush, it just kinda adds water to it. I've got several of them. That way I'm not mixing the colors as much and I can go faster, but you can just use that if you want to. I am gonna take, let me get a grain here. And I'm not gonna do this whole thing, but I'm just gonna show you how fun it is and how easy it is to do this. Okay, so they have like a paint type tip and I'm just gonna take this and I'm not even gonna be super careful. I don't care if I stay in the lines. It doesn't matter to me. Okay, and I'm gonna do that over here. And I'm telling you guys, it is really fun. Um, there's all different brands. Those were not expensive. Um, I got the 24. I really wished I'd have got a bigger one, but I wanted to try them first. Like I always usually do that, and I'm hooked on this. So you're gonna see me doing this a lot because it was really fun. And that's kind of the point of all of this, guys. It's it's for it to be fun and for you to use different mediums and to you know try different things. And um, I think was it Artie Mays has a Try It Tuesday or something. And I thought that is just really smart because people need to, you know, get out of your comfort zone and try different things. Okay, so now I'm going to take a darker green and I'm just going to go in there with that. Oops, that's a little bit too dark, but that's okay. I want to kind of show you guys what you can do. I'm lightly going in there just to add contrast. That's really not the green I should have used, but that's okay. So then you would take your little water pan. It works just like the other one does. And you just want to take it and blend it. And it is just like using watercolors. See how the colors are all blending together? So you would do that. You know, just have fun. Or you can use watercolors. You don't have to use these. Plain old watercolors, a cheap set of watercolors would do exactly the same thing. You're just trying to get some paint on there, okay? And then I might take that and go, let me use a different color green because that was definitely not the right color green. Here we go. Let's just try this one. But, you know, all you're trying to do is get some, get a little bit of, um, you know, paint on there so that little color so that you can do this. I'm just going to do a little bit more on this. I'm not going to do the whole thing, but you get the idea. Let's see. I don't know what color is it for. I think it's yellow and orange. I think that's what it is. Okay. So, you know, just look how, look how fast I'm doing this. I'm not paying attention really. I'm just kind of lightly. And then, like I said, you have time, you take your time with it. But my point is, is to show you different ways to decorate your journal that are unique. Um, you're making it personal. Um, I mean, I don't have anything against using digitals, but I do think that, or scrapbook paper, or whatever, but you do want to make sure that, you know, you're adding your personal touch to it. And doing things like this, to me, um, do that. They add your personal touch. Um, they are unique. They're one of a kind. And you can supplement, you know, if you're, if you're using other things that are not necessarily, you know, that um, unique to you, you can do that and add, you know, other stuff. So I'm going to do that. And I am not a painter and I am, oh, I am not an artist. I have two sisters that are just amazing artists. I mean, amazing. And I could paint a picture for anything. It just would not happen because I can't do it. And anyway, so, um, yeah, I can't do that. 
But then again, they can't do what I do, so they have a hard time with it. So, all right, so now I'm just going to take that and let's see, I don't know what color I'm going to put in the middle. Mm -hmm. put, I don't want to put that in there. I'm going to put a little of that in there just to kind of make it pop a little bit. Okay. Maybe a few other pieces in here. Okay, so now all I'm going to do, and I'm not doing a very good job. I only have 24 colors, so that's kind of hard for me to do this. But then all you're going to do is take your, your little thing and then you're going to blend it. That's it, guys. It's so easy and so much fun. And I strongly recommend um, trying out different things and using different techniques. You could certainly do this on just a coffee dyed page. You don't have to do it on a music page. Um, Let's see what color. I think I'm going to do that pink. Do these pink. So I'm going to kind of go in here with this. And guys, I am going super fast because we're running out of time. We've actually already ran out of time, but I'm going to do this fast just so that you can kind of see what you can do just to kind of make things look different, okay? I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to take this lighter pink and go in there. Like I said, I'm very limited on my color, so I can't really do a lot. I am going to definitely get more of these, but I don't, you know, I, I'm tired of getting things and using them one time and then putting them on a shelf. So I am going to definitely incorporate a lot more of the stuff I have, and you're going to see me doing that because... I have a feeling that there's a lot of people out there that um, probably have stuff sitting around and they don't use it either. So kind of clean that off a little bit, get some water on there. And I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm just going to kind of blend it and do that. And you can see I'm going outside the lines and you know what? That's okay. That is totally okay. Okay, so basically you get the idea. You're just adding color. Um, you've added, you would do it to the other side if you want to. You don't have to. You could just leave it just like that. I mean, that looks cool too. But what you've done is you've made a very unique uh, music page to put in your, um, to put in your journal. And like I told you, that matte medium, you can't even really tell you can't really even see the lines. I mean, they're pretty much, they're gone, okay? Um, I am going to show you the other one. Hopefully, it's dry. It's almost dry. But if you look with that gel on top, okay, it pretty much gets rid of all the lines. And you've got this really cool page that you can, again, put in your um, journal. Now, this other one, what I was going to show you guys is the same thing that we did with these pens with your stamp. And I don't even know what to do with this, so I'll just color a couple flowers just so you can see. Um, you're just going to go in and do the exact same thing. Go in there and just do some coloring. Right? No different. And like I said, I don't. You, they don't have to be perfect because this is very forgiving. Where's my other green? I'm going to try that again. You know, you want to basically just have fun with that. 
and just put some color on there and you'll see it'll turn out cool. Doesn't it doesn't take an artist to do this. And I'm going to just go over this really quick just so you guys can see, but you get the idea. <clears throat> I'll show you what it looks like done. I've got my other color still in there, so it's kind of blending. But anyway, you would do the same thing to your stamped images that you did to this image and end up with a really cool um, music page, you know, with just a stamp. And it doesn't have to be something that's intricate. It could be a flower or a butterfly, anything you want to stamp on there. So just put your stamps on. You put three butterflies on here, um, a dragonfly, and color those in or something. I think that'd be cool. Um, you know, just use your imagination. Go through your stash. See what you have. Um, go through your napkins. You know, do do what you can to kind of have fun with it because that's kind of the point, you know. Just have a little fun. Enjoy yourself. Okay, so I just wanted to um, show you guys um, something that I didn't go over yet. And um, as far as the color pencils go, um, the watercolor pencils, they work just as well. And I wanted to show you another way that you can kind of make things your own. Um, this is a napkin that I used and the way that it's colored, and there's actually a lot like this. Um, it looks kind of watercolory um, the way they did it. I'm sure it was probably when it was made, it was uh, watercolor. And the cool thing about this napkin is it has um, spots behind it that are just, um, you know, black and white. And by itself, it looks really, really cool. I mean, I don't think you really have to do anything else. But what you could do with that is go in and just shade things a little bit that are in there, okay? Like this. And I'm doing this fast. Like I said, y'all want to take your time. Maybe put some orange in there on this one. Right? So, and... I already painted the leaves that are down here in, um, in a, not painted, colored the, these leaves. And anyway, what you could do is just go in there and, um, now I don't think these blend as well as the, um, Arteza, uh, water, um, color brushes. But it does blend, and it will give you that same watercolor effect. And it's kind of cool because it looks, you know, more hand-painted than... Anyway, the process to put the napkin on is the same. Again, I don't add the dark color to the stain because my napkin background was white. I only added it to the other one because, you know, it was... Um, I can see this yellow one. I could add a, a little darker color around the edges. Now, I did not color that in, but if I want to add a little bit more around it, I could do that. Okay. And go in a little bit, and it'll make it look um, a little bit more hand-painted. Okay. And you're just going to, um, I just wanted to show you. And guys, you do not have to have expensive watercolors, to be honest with you. Um, I have some I bought at Walmart, and I honestly think they work just as well. So um, I'm using these because I have them, but I'm just simply saying you don't necessarily have to go out. Now, see, this broke up a little bit when I was doing it, so I'm going to go back in and fix it. That's another thing that you can do. Clean your brush and just kind of go in there and and do that. And you know what that does is it gives it a kind of a custom look. You know you can you can go around the butterfly and just add a little to that. Just you know do what you want to do. Um, it doesn't have to be 
like here was just the black and white. It doesn't have to be. You can go back in on the parts that have color and do that. And it really, it, it makes it a little bit more custom. And at the same time, it really um, brings it up a notch as far as um, being able to uh, kind of just customize your, um, your, your music pages. Anyway, that, I did that one. I wanted you to see that. Um, this is the stamps that we, we did. And um, I think they turned out pretty cool. And, you know, obviously that's um, a kind of a custom look. This is the other one that we did that was just the black and white. And I think that turned out really neat. Okay. And then you've got this one that we did that looks more antique and whatever. But um, the one thing I did want to say, on all of these, it didn't show through. Okay, so on the other side, because if you're going to put these in a, you know. But on this one, it did. And what I would do with that is I would just take um, some gesso and let me get a different brush. I would just take some gesso and go right over this in here. And actually, you'd be better off if you use this to go across. I just wanted to get it out. Okay, just kind of go like that and take it across. And I think that gives it a kind of a cool look. It covers that and allows you to... Um, right on it still okay and do that on the other side take some of that off and really all you're trying to do is just make it to where you know it's usable on the other side and I usually may go over that a little bit and um, finish it with some a little bit of in, in, uh, vintage photo, you know, and just dust it on after. And that, to me, will allow you to then use that later, um, you know, just as a, just so that you're not um, wasting that page. And of course, you could put other things on it. You could put paper on it, you could do whatever you want to. And like I said, I would go over that when it's dry with some, just take your brush that I had like this with your vintage photo and go over it and it'll blend in really cool and it'll look neat and there you go. So that is that. So that's pretty much it guys. That's all I have.